tell us who you are and where we are and what you're up to. We are both history teachers at Noted School and this academic year we are piloting an EBL project involving coaching. Yeah, we're both um, taking on um, different elements of that. I'm doing the coaching for learning, a parental involvement experimental group, whereas Jenny, um, you're doing um, straightforward, well, I say straightforward, um, inquiry based learning. Okay, and your name is? Eddie Stevenson. Okay, so tell, tell us um, what's been really good about your first prototype and what's been not so good and what you're going to do differently. For me, the most successful thing was the attitude of the students towards their learning and they really felt that they were taking control of it and they were being much more independent than they normally are. I would agree with that because one of the things we talked about is that sometimes we feel like these students kind of come in as empty vessels and we're kind of filling their heads with information and they're going onwards and you know they do their assessments and they're jumping through the hoops but when you're asking them to do research or when they're getting to GCSE stages actually they're not at the level that you would expect them to be and they find it a real challenge. I've certainly found that with my early mm. entry class. And it's because we haven't built that in previously so it comes as a bit of a shock. So they enjoyed it and I think they are starting to understand how things are changing by, by doing this project and, and how the expectations of them are different. Um, what have you actually been doing in terms of coaching for learning? So in terms of the coaching for learning um, that we have done, um, there are two classes which are doing coaching for learning. Um, I'm involved with one of those classes and um, we've had Sam Green um, who has obviously been coming into school. One of the things that she's been doing, uh, um, doing with us is teaching us how to be a coach, you know, good coaching questions, um, in terms of the different roles that you're going to be taking on and we've been incorporating that into um, our classes. Certainly with my coaching group and with Steve's coaching group, one of the things that we've tried to do um, is try and um, use that coaching to try and facilitate their learning, to try and encourage them to take a bit more ownership in terms of what they're doing, which I suppose naturally comes with inquiry based learning anyway. Have we been trying to get them to take really ownership of, of pretty much I suppose every single part of the process in terms of the groupings that they're going to be in, the questions that they're following, the research that they're actually doing. We've tried to get them to really analyse what they're doing, why they're doing it and what they're hoping to achieve. And um, something that we found is that I haven't consciously been coaching, I haven't used any of the coaching resources, I haven't had any of the coaching training, but we seem to be noticing that my role as a teacher has shifted more into the direction of coaching naturally through the um, inquiry process being undertaken by the students. Absolutely, I think one of the things that I found is I started off doing what was regards to what people would say was perhaps pure coaching and I found that actually in a teaching capacity that didn't necessarily work and I found that um, coaching for learning in the classroom is, is more complex than um, is pure coaching. You're taking on lots of different roles in terms of the mentoring and the, t you know, the expert knowledge and, and the coaching as well so I don't think it's as simple as um, pure coaching I'm sure that's probably what you're starting to find mm -hmm. during the inquiry. Yeah and anyway. it's, it's a bit bumpy because we're, we're shifting our roles but this is our first attempt and we're going to, or we have now, reflected on, on what's gone well and what we're going to work on so um, we're going to start a, a second inquiry quite soon next month. I think it's certainly challenged me as a teacher in a way that no other, I thought, I think I felt like I was doing inquiry before but when you're doing, you know, obviously following the steps that you've done and also in terms of the coaching, I've certainly found this has made me far more reflective as a teacher mm. and certainly it's been the most challenging thing that I've done, far more so than my masters. So if you had to um, describe what coaching for learning is uh, now, what would you say? I think I shouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think from what we've done when we've reflected on it, I think both of us have been um, kind of fusing different elements um, of teaching together because we are obviously doing, both of us have found naturally obviously that we're doing coaching. Sometimes we've been more facilitators of learning, sometimes you know you've got your expert knowledge head on. And I think really there are different roles and we talked about the counselling role as well, actually coaching isn't just about being a coach, I think you're putting on lots of different hats and it's mm. knowing and so I when think to put those on. That's really important because we we sort of talk about the expert role in a, in a negative way as yeah. if, if as if the teacher having this expert knowledge is always a bad thing and i think at at some points we do need to do that as part of the inquiry process but it's about also knowing where the coaching can come in and where the facility comes in where the, where the different roles come in absolutely so so what are you going to do differently in your next prototype <laughs>
<laughs> Gosh, we've had lots of ideas, haven't we, in terms yeah, of what we'd like I, to do. I think something that we'd like to try is, is starting more with a personal object or play, so we've yeah. discussed use of photography as a starting point, because previously we, we set a theme, and they did have a lot of choice within that, but it might be nice to, to try and get them to generate questions on something that they have chosen. I think it's far more personal, isn't it? Because yeah. whilst most students found something they were interested in conflict, a lot of them it wasn't naturally of interest to all students, so I think we missed out slightly on the... Uh, I mean, interest. Well, I think the vast majority of students did really enjoy it, but I think that will make it far more meaningful for students. Yeah, and it'll be interesting something more meaningful for us to them. see the difference between us setting the, the theme and, and them choosing something or taking some photos and, and generating questions from those. I think as a coach as well, it may well find that actually deepens kind of our mutual understanding in terms of if as a coach you're sharing your pictures and personal experiences and they're doing that. I think it'll connect us to our classes perhaps in a way that following pursuing an inquiry question mm. around a theme yeah certainly if we then also bring in an object or take photos ourselves and share that with them uh, that could have quite a big impact on relationships couldn't it and just getting to know them in a far more personal way certainly a way outside of the classroom isn't it and taking it I suppose it's far more like coaching yeah and understand. I think you do sort of develop that relationship with them over over time anyway but I think this would be more open and and more likely to kind of foster Closer relationships with students, I suppose. Do you think it will make a difference to the knowledge they construct? I think that it does in terms of who's in control of of that yeah. knowledge. And I think that they will also able be more able to see links between things through realising that this basic object or this photo that they've taken can lead to so many different themes or issues. In some respects it's relating the curriculum to their, um, to their personal lives, isn't it? Because often, you know, making making history or making different subjects meaningful because exactly. often they'll uh -huh. see these events or it's very personal to them but they don't necessarily connect that to the curriculum so I think in that respect it's going to be far They're meaningful. making the steps, aren't they? So, absolutely. And is there anything else that you're going to do differently that's significant? We'd quite like to um, develop more use of a scrapbook or yeah. a sort of portfolio so at the end they'll have their outcome and then a, a book to demonstrate um, what they've done. And we, d we did do that, but for my group it was just sort of stick it in a folder at the end of each lesson. And I think we'd like to get them, or certainly with my group, I'd like them to have more pride in, in their research and, and what, they've, what they've made. Because? I think so that they can make connections between the steps that they've made, rather than it just being a big wardrobe paper, they'll, they'll be able to display it in, mm. in a way that will show the steps more clearly and show what they've done. I think um, we did a lot of reflective work in terms of them submitting online logs but the formality um, of what they were writing I think meant that they weren't able to be as reflective as perhaps they'd like to be or I think in some respects they felt guided to write certain things by the questions that we're doing whereas if we provide a scrapbook I'm hoping that you know, they feel ownership over that scrapbook and the idea is that they're reflecting what they think and feel, not what I'm trying to get them to encourage to mm. And I think they might explore things a bit more if they can sort of say, oh, we'll put that in the scrapbook. And it's not necessarily going to be under scrutiny. They, they you know, mm. they can kind of reflect what they what they actually genuinely think and feel in a more colloquial manner rather than having to formally write down exactly how they think or feel in a way that they think is acceptable to their teacher or their parents. Yeah. And um, what, um, anything else? Uh, I think learning power is one of the things that we definitely like to um, be talking about because obviously we did do the Ellie profiles and one of the um, interesting things is with my class we talked about it but I think it was more in a surface sort mm. of we didn't really it wasn't really in as meaningful but way I, as I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing because now that they've done the inquiry process once I think they'll have more of an understanding now of why we're doing it and, and what we want to use their learning profiles for but I'd definitely like to spend a, a couple of lessons looking more at their profiles maybe getting them to think about which animals they would connect with, which areas of um, learning power, um, so that they understand it more, more deeply. And they can then sort of monitor their their changes and, and really understand their learning journey. Do you also think, though, I think with my class, I don't think they really understood what they were like as learners, because I don't think they've ever been challenged like this. Um, in terms of when we talk about resilience and things, so they've had that homework that they don't quite understand, but then, you know, they've been able to achieve help, you know, get help and kind of overcome that problem, whereas this is kind of, it's more of a long-term project, whereas actually they are really being tested to their full capabilities. So when we're talking about 
um, creativity and we're talking about the different like I think they have a much better understanding now of what they mean because mm -hmm. now they've got kind of examples they can refer to yes that's like when we did this and I really struggled with that and then they can kind of talk about the mechanisms that mm -hmm. they've placed to overcome that I think the, or not. the adults, the staff that are in the school that have um, completed their early profile experience is a similar thing actually it, and I think everyone's quite keen to know what the result is and, and think about how they could perhaps change or adapt. It might be interesting to work with their outcomes as well, looking at different groups learning profiles and looking at the outcomes that they've actually gone on to mm -hmm. produce, because it's very clear that some groups have kind of, you know, they've really struggled with their inquiry question, they're halfway there and then they've kind of, they can't really move beyond that, so you can see the groups who are, who are obviously yeah. you know, stronger in certain categories and you can, you can see that reflected in the work that they're doing, so it might be interesting now to use partly their outcomes uh -huh. in terms of their learning the learning power in terms of where they actually yeah, are. Yeah, and think about how we're going to use their profiles to think about what we're doing in terms of the structure of the next And one. also group construction. So one of the things is, you know, we did, you know, on a more, um, I suppose, surface level in terms of, you know, which group is going to be with, you know, pros and cons of both ones, but actually in terms of using learning power to help construct the groups that you're working in might be an yeah. interesting conversation to have and do different, you know, different people have different strengths in different areas that enhance the group, does it matter? Or should we put people with similar profiles together or people with different profiles together? So so if you had to summarise the whole thing in a sentence, what would your summaries be? In one sentence? Wow. In a word, emotional. <laughs> <laughs> so it is emotional. That's one of the students, they, how they described it. Extraordinary. Yeah. Extraordinary. Um, it, I think it's very much a journey, isn't it? Because we're sort of exploring it and trying to understand how to go forward. And the, the students are very much aware that this is something different and that they're sort of on a path, in a way, to, to change, I think. I think they do realise it's very different. I think they talk about innovation. Um, but this isn't just innovation. We really are pushing the boundaries of any, you know, of any of the teacher training, I think, that we've done. And it's certainly the most challenging and rewarding thing that I have done and, so far. And you've talked about the children learning and you learning, what about the school as a whole? I think that's one of the things that we'll certainly be doing is raising the profile of what we're doing because I think people are aware of it, we've got the website etc. I think though we really need, to, what we're doing here is, is pretty groundbreaking. And I, I think we need yeah, to be and I think that. you'll definitely find an element of staff that think this, you know, is just sort of a, a, another new thing that will have its day. But if you look at the exams, if you look at the introduction of controlled assessment, these are the skills that, that people need. So it definitely definitely has a place so that when they get there, they're, they're much more able to do it. Thank you very much. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. So until next time, we'll come back after your next prototype and see, see where you are there. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.